Hi, everyone. Um, welcome to the final part, the closing event uh, of uh, IF Quantum Game Jam. So this is the moment in which we will see uh, what are the games developed during this uh, um, fantastic brainstorming uh, that has been going on for uh, almost two days. <laughs> let's say we started on friday evening um, and um well uh, together with marilu natasha and james uh, we are here uh, to um discuss and present the games and so marilu uh, do you want to say something before we begin oh well uh, that just that it has been a fantastic weekend and so we are uh, uh, going i think to uh keep going with our uh, uh final day of uh, this uh uh, brainstorming and this quantum game jam and uh, uh, having uh, uh, yet a lot of fun. So I think we can uh, just start and uh, uh, we, every one of us is curious to see all the games that have been produced. Very nice. Um, and before beginning, I would like to introduce briefly uh, the members of our team because uh, uh, that are member of the it's not a jury, but it's a committee uh, that will give some feedback to the game because, um, of course, um, probably I don't know how, if everyone has followed the first uh, part uh, of the of the game jam. Um, but of course, uh, my name is, as you know, Sabrina Maniscalco, and I'm from the University of Turku and Alto University. Uh, and uh, Marilu Kiofalo, professor uh, at the University of Pisa. Then we have uh, Natasha Skalt. Natasha is the CEO of the uh, game company Mitail, uh, but she is also the uh, president of uh, IGDA Finland. Uh, and then uh, uh, Dr. James Wooten, who is an, um, a researcher at, 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 uh, <laughs> researcher at IBM Zurich. Um, and of course, he is here to represent um, you know, the games developed with IBM quantum computers. Uh, now we are ready, uh, and I think that the first team to present is a team number five. Uh, the name of the game is Consciousness, and uh, Vince should be here with us. So I will just uh, start sharing my screen. Uh, so, can everyone see my screen uh, clearly? Yeah, yeah. Cool. So, um, so thank you for um, for having us. Uh, so, uh, I'm from uh, Team Five uh, Consciousness. So, we would like to use the uh, quantum gates and the quantum states uh, to see if we can use it to explore the mind with the players. And uh, uh, these are our teammates, and we have. Uh, several programmers and uh, uh, qu uh, quantum physics and also a graphic uh, and uh, uh, some support from the staffs. Right. So uh, due to the uh, 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 difficulties in setting up uh, our game engine, we we only uh, realized the um, the brainstorming of this game. Um, but uh, I will quickly uh, just uh, showcase what. Or what we intended to do. So what we want to do is, uh, in the beginning is we want to represent the neurons uh, with uh, different, like uh, with different um, quantum states. Uh, in particular, we want we would like to use six qubits as input. As a result, we will end up with two to the six uh, states, and each state uh, will be uh, uh, one particular neurons and forming this. Um, uh, brain network, for example, and you what use what we would like user to do is uh, to map from one neuron to uh, one or more neurons, for example, and uh, by using quantum gates, we're able to uh, map from one state to several states. So classically, it's only possible to map from one to one uh, by binary operations because only the uh, uh, not gate. It's possible and the in, in the, it's a deterministic uh, operation, uh, but with quantum states, uh, sorry, quantum gates, for example, uh, Harman gate in, uh, can enable a um, 
uh, superposition if the measurement uh, shot is large enough. Uh, so this is one of the example actually where we in, in, uh, use the um, entanglement in particular. So Harama gate and control knot will make uh, us to go through this, uh, to map to, from one state to two states uh, simultaneously. So this is uh, uh, the brief idea. Right. And the uh, uh, educational purpose of this game is uh, by such mapping. So if we uh, imagine we're back in the old days where we only know, knew the um, uh, some uh, fundamental classical operation like and or and exclusive or, and when people want to realize the uh, operation called adding, and then in that case, we will see that the carry uh, or the most significant digit will be uh, end operation and the least significant digit will be exclusive or. Uh, so basically in our game, we're kind of doing the similar things. We want to map some, uh, some from state to state, which is uh, it's, it's just like we're playing around with a truth table. And in this game, we hope to use quantum gates operation to uh, help you train the users or the players so they are familiar with quantum gates and how this how the states map to other states. Uh, so, yes, is there uh, anything I can answer with? I mean, is there a question or? Okay. Uh, Thank you very question. much. Oh, yes. Yeah, sure. yeah, sure. uh, no, there was no question. Uh, uh, please go ahead. Oh, oh yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, but any, let me know anytime you have questions. So here, this page just quickly summarize what we did so far, uh, the, as a, in terms of modules. So we plan to use Unity uh, engines, and uh, uh, parse with, uh, and we use, and we want to use uh, C, uh, C sharp as a parser to translate, uh, to to transfer um, the uh, to connect between Unity engine and the QSKit. Uh, uh, with IBM quantum services and uh, we finished uh, uh, this uh, this uh, the back end for uh, let's put it this way uh, but uh, the front the front end uh, we still need uh, the unity engine to be correctly set up and we uh, uh, we, we, we need more time on that right so uh, this is our uh, current progress So if um, so, so far so good. If, if everything is okay, I can show my our um, a quick video just showing the tutorial of uh, our our game in our thought. Let's see. Okay, so as a tutorial part, we would like to uh, we want to train user uh, from the binary operation, which is classical. For example, in this page, we want to map. Uh, uh, sorry, the resolution is kind of not very good here, but we want to ask user to map from blue to red neurons. For example, zero zero one zero one zero to zero 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 one zero, and in that case. Or the uh, you, the user will be asked to uh, put the user will be asked to uh, put uh, a uh, NOT gate on a certain um, qubit, and then try to map from one state to the other, and then next we will ask user try to map one state to two states, and in that case. A, super, uh, a superposition will be needed for where the um, Harama gate will be used to form uh, a, a neuron link from one state to two. And uh, uh, but in order to so in so so far, a user might think that they can exploit this game 
by just mapping to all from one state to all the state by using all the Haramar gate, just forming all of the superposition. And in order to uh, prevent user from or suppress user from doing that, discourage user from doing that, uh, we designed uh, a um, some uh, bad neurons that uh, users should not connect it to. And in that case, in order to avoid those neurons, they need to um, come up with some. So for example, if they just use a uh, full Harama gate, they will be unavoidably con connected to a particular neuron that's actually forbidden. And in that case, we will need a um, the proper uh, um, the proper um, entanglement in order to just connect it to two of the neurons. So for example, in this case, this is a bail state. And uh, by using Haramar, uh, follow, it with, uh, follow up with a control knot, user is able to form this bail state. So basically in our game, we want to train user to think, uh, come up with some uh, quantum gate operation such that they will have um, this uh, a particular uh, distribution of states. So that's uh, that's all for my presentation. Thank you. And I will take question here or comment. Thank you. Hi, Natasha. Hi. Thank you so much for your presentation and really fascinating um, concept there. Um, just to clarify also for the viewers, what is the win state of the game? So when do you win the game? Yes, yeah. Uh, so the idea was uh, so by, by, by going through those uh, neurons, we, we, so the idea is we want to set up some trophies uh, at different neurons. And uh, so the winning state is, is more like uh, to getting some achievement, for example. And those uh, trophy was supposed to design to be some kind of um, thoughts. We, we have some like imaginary, uh, like elemental things that you will collect along the path. Like when you go to that state, you collect it, go to that state, you collect that. And uh, uh, there will be positive uh, trophies and negative trophies. So basically uh, as a scoring system, so you increase the score and decrease the score. So if you collect uh, some negative thoughts, then you, 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 your score just drop, for example. Yeah. I, I see a lot of potential there, especially with presenting the uh, kind of like how this quantum brain would actually yes. work, meaning that like what thoughts, what things were actually happening that had when it comes to, uh, so, so yeah, re really great. So thank you, thanks for the answer. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Actually, that's uh, that's one of our motivation of this game. Is uh, one of our uh, member. Uh, uh, sorry, I have very weak memory in terms of linking the names. But one of our members specifically mentioned that a particular research going on right now is uh, this consciousness, and they want to map the uh, the neuron with uh, the quantum phenomena, and so they they kind of form the consciousness, and the, that's why we put our name, just Q, starts, starting with Q-U and consciousness, yes. Hi, um, thanks for your presentation. Uh, I liked uh, that it was a game based on quantum gate. So it seemed that the moves that you make, even you put them on the circuit. So it seems like it could be <laughs> a good thing to help people understand how different gates combine together. Was that an intention there? Yes, and actually, I was still thinking that's kind of uh, too abstract to a beginner if they never touch a quantum composer, a quantum circuit composer. So that's part of the uh, interface improvement I want to do in the future, just to because like dragging the gates and then uh, imagine and then uh, imagine that projected to state this step, I think is still kind of unintuitive. But yeah, that, that's one uh, attempt. If someone already play, uh, uh, like have some experience with uh, the uh, IBM uh, circuit composer, they can get it uh, easier, like understand it easier. Yeah. Yeah, great. And uh, in terms of integrating into Unity, um, mm -hmm. I wonder how you did that. And maybe it'd be nice for, if you shared the code online for anyone else who's trying to integrate Kiskit into game engines in the future. 
Oh, right now it's just through this. Yeah, we'll definitely. Uh, so that part has been finished. So we'll definitely show. Uh, put it on. I think the GitHub is publicized, but I, I, I will, I will double check. But the idea is basically we have a this uh, C uh, C sharp thing that will translate the file. Uh, so basically we have a local file, and the QSKit will check the local file and just add the parser function and just check local file uh, in terms of the gate operations and the current state. So they're only basically just strings. And the uh, QSKit will uh, take the gate operation defined by the user and then translate it into, I mean, do the all the calculation and collapse the state and then write it in another file that uh, Unity will pick up with C, C sharp. But the unit part, unit part, I'm not very familiar. But at least this is what uh, QSKI will be used as a backend. Okay, thank you. Thanks. So Vince, uh, uh, many thanks for for your presentation and also this uh, beautiful idea. Uh, I also see, as Natasha said, a lot of potential in uh, in this uh, in this game. I wanted to ask you whether. You have thought about uh, hampers uh, that uh, uh, can be uh, put to the players to push his goal or her goal, and uh, I mean whether whether you had have, have some idea about this. Uh, I thank you, Mar Ma Marilu. So, do you mean like uh, how many person can play in this game? No, no. I was meaning or... like something that uh, can some some obstacles that can be can can be put to make uh, uh, everything uh, to increase the level of challenge. Oh yeah, yes, 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 okay. yeah, yeah, definitely. So the, yeah, thank you for the question. So actually, this game was. Uh, I, I tried to play this on, on paper and it turns out to be pretty difficult because just because the size of the networks, because they're two to the six qubits and the, sorry, two to the six states. And if you imagine you want to, so just imagine you, there are several bunch of trophies and you want to like kind of get through all of them. Uh, so for example, quantum superposition and uh, 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 a superposition and entanglement can help us to go to some of the states, but in order to map from one to m more, it's hard to like think. At least I'm a classical guy. I mean, at least binary guy. So I can imagine some mapping from one to one, like just adding, adding a not gate, for example. But uh, and by by working with quantum computer for a while, I start to be able to work with one to two. But one to four, one to five, one to or one to eight, that's kind of beyond my mind. It's hard to like uh, just imagine in my mind. So and this is one of the reasons why I want to develop this game, because uh, this game serves as like a tool so people can just simply play around and have some mind built up. And so they can prepare them as a quantum engineer, for example, in particular quantum gate engineer. And in that case, I think the the, the difficulty can be set up this way. So one to two. But one to two can also be different in different way. So one to two can be uh, just superposition. So you just flip one gate with Harama. And the other is bail state. So bail state is basically uh, this, uh, so you, there are like entanglement, right? So zero, one, one, and zero, zero, zero is bail state. But also the GHZ state, which is zero, 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 and one, one, one. So this kind of mapping is kind of, uh, more and more difficult and so by by ex like exploring the different combination the i mean we can kind of um train the user to be more familiar with quantum uh, rules yeah that's what i saw i mean the complexity exists in the how complicated the circuit is like haramaka is simple and they will map to superposition and uh, the next level would be bail state the the circuit Forming the bail state is a little bit more difficult. Is Haramar and the CNAT. and the circuit to form a GHZ state is even more difficult. Is Haramar and CNAT and CNAT, if I remember correctly. So that's uh, the difficulty in the circuit level can be realized as a uh, uh, like a difficulty in the game levels. Okay. And thank, thank you me. very much, Vint. Thank you. Oh, yeah, much. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, I think we have to move on to the next team, otherwise it will be late. <laughs> but thanks again. Um, and yes, thanks yes, uh, to all your team. Um, uh,
Uh, now, uh, I, I uh, will call now the second team, that is uh, team uh, number two, obviously. <laughs> Uh, and the person who represents team number two is Nicola Pranzini. The name of the game is Lit. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Hi. Uh, so I'll share my screen. Um, let's see. Can you hear me still? <laughs> yes, we do. Okay. Um, so as Sabrina introduced me, uh, hello everyone. Uh, I'm Nicola uh, from the Fun Quantic team. <laughs> and I am here to present uh, Lit, which is a game about quantum and life. And first of all, the theme we choose uh, choose before, um, between the three possible is quantum biology. And in particular, um, we think about uh, plants. So as all we know, uh, plants uh, do photosynthesis to get energy from the sun. And uh, in particular, sun emits energy in terms of photons, uh, which can travel from the sun uh, to the earth and eventually uh, can get absorbed by the leaf of the, of the plants in which they can uh, reach uh, something like a power plant in uh, where they are they are absorbed so uh it, it can it has been shown uh, that uh this this process can happen uh, classically but the efficiency that plants can achieve uh with this process cannot be explained classically so if you think about these photons coming from the sun and reaching the plants and start and they start a classical path which can be for example random inside the the power plant of the of the plants uh, uh, these cannot be as efficient as we see in nature so as every time uh, we have some problems with classical physics it's the time to think about quantum physics and so we we started to think about how to uh, tell uh, the photons bizarre adventure uh, from the from the surface of the leaf to eventually the point in which uh, the photon gets absorbed, and we are sorry, Nicola. I just interrupt you a second because if you want, you are not your screen is not in presentation mode. The PDF. Oh, really? So if you want to have it just uh, wider, uh, you can. Okay, oh. now it's, it's better. Thanks. Oh no, it's back okay. again. So Yao, can you can you see that? Uh, yes, it, it was before it was in presentation mode, but now it's again uh, not in presentation mode. But we can uh, see it. it's smaller. So control L, control L. Can you, can, now it's working, right? Is it? No, 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 no not yet. Uh, let's see. If I do like this, can you see it? Uh, no, well, just go to Vista and then uh, uh, modalità oh, okay, sure. or control L. Oh, let's see. Mm. Let's try again. Um, Just on Acrobat. Yeah. On the top. Uh, uh, my, my PC oh. freezed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I feel responsible. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> My fault. <laughs> uh, wait, I'll try something like. Oh no. The browser freezed. Can you can you still hear me? Sure. Yes, we do. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, I'm trying something. Okay. Nicola, if you probably if you need more time, we could. Uh, I was just considering maybe we can uh, start maybe. with the next 
speaker uh, and then we go back to Nicola. Who did this be? Unless Nicola, you tell us that it's more or less, you're more or less ready again. Okay, I think we lost I think Nicola. Nicola is frozen, uh, so oh, he's back. We have yeah. Nicola. Welcome, my friend. He's there is, yeah, there is also a superposition of me. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, let's try again. <laughs> uh, share screen. Uh, okay. okay. Can you see my screen? Uh, now? Yes. Now, yes. And can you see the presentation now? Can you see the slides? Yeah, but still yeah now just go to vista on top yes and then uh, and modalità the, schermo intero and, yes okay can yeah. you see that now, that now it's yes it's perfect okay perfect uh have you missed something before like the the previous slide no no this was this okay. one. i mean no no you okay see. okay okay sorry for that um so yeah, um, so when I, I was saying that when something classical doesn't work, uh, we should look for, for a quantum explanation. And so our idea was to follow uh, a photon's bizarre adventure and to tell the tale about the photons, uh, starting from the point in which it reached uh, the outside of the power plant and till the point in which it gets absorbed. And we designed something like uh, a quantum graph. So a graph with uh, all different spots representing chloroplasts. And the photon can jump from one point of the graph to the other, uh, but not in a classical way, uh, just in a classical one. So you, at the beginning of the, of the journey, you got your photon splitted in two different uh, stories, which, is, which are superposed. So the photon can travel uh, along all the way down to the point in which it gets absorbed, and it will eventually interfere, uh, get interfered with itself. So um, to make it more like understandable and uh, gamify it, uh, we designed a game like this. So uh, the game is, the genre is a puzzle game uh, with, with a chill out uh, mood. So it's really totally relaxing game. And so you start from one spot, uh, which is the, the bright one, and you decide one of the two possible branches along the graph. Uh, as soon as you decide one of the two, let's say the yellow one, so you, you choose the first dot numbered one, uh, the, uh, another photon, which is uh, a superposition of yourself, uh, gets controlled by, by the computer and gets all the way down to the final point, following a random path. And all uh, the, the numbers uh, represented on the spot represent the length of the, of the path. So at the end, you have this 18 number uh, in purple, which represents the length of the photon, of the uh, photon controlled by the computer. You, uh, your task is to choose the right path uh, which makes the, num the, the number, your length, which is uh, the, the yellow number, most similar as, as most as similar as the purple one. Uh, but since there are quantum effects, uh, the, the point is that you don't have to uh, exactly match the number, but you just have to match uh, the unity number. So let's say you, you get an eight, uh, that's the perfect score. So, if you get to have uh, the, the, the number uh, equal to the purple number plus minus 10, which is, uh, th th you, you win the game. Otherwise, you, you can still uh, interfere a bit unless you get really far away from that uh, number, uh, that purple number. Uh, and when you, when you are five uh, numbers away, you get zero. So the photons at the end of the path uh, we'll find uh, its copy with uh, that has had a very different, uh, has followed a very different path, and they cannot interfere uh, as good as they would have interfered if the path were similar. So 
uh, I hope to have explained that well, <laughs> even though uh, this is not really easy to understand in a classical way. And yeah, so thanks for the attention and for all the fun we have had in this weekend. And please ask questions if you like. Thank you very much, Nicola. Uh, do you have a video of the gameplay? Yes. Uh, let's see if I can manage to uh, let you see that. OK. OK. Can you see that? Yes. At least I see it, although it's at the moment it's still dark. And can you hear the okay. sound also? Yes. No, I don't hear the sound. So So, can you see that? And can you still hear me? Yes, and we see it. Uh, we just don't okay. hear this. But you don't see this. Don't, don't, don't get to. to. Okay. Uh, it doesn't okay. matter. So, the, the beginning, as I say it, at the beginning, the player chooses one of the two possible paths. And the computer uh, choose, is forced to choose the other. And also a random path along all the leaves. And eventually, it, uh, it scores some, some target number, which, for example, is 18 here. So the player starts to build its own path along the way. And as you can see, the way in which the, the score, which is this one, is calculated is not really easy to, to catch. Because that, that will be like uh, a, a difference between the target and the, the score that you are making, so that it's three. Um, but since uh, photons can um, can remember like just as more like uh, <laughs> let's see uh, they they can remember the number of the the, the length they have uh, traveled uh, only for a small uh, length. So they when they reach the end they eventually start at the beginning. And so when you reach, uh, like, let's see, for example, the, the value of nine, when you reach the value of nine, uh, you start from zero again. So for example, here, 18 and eight are exactly the same number in terms of, in terms of interference, because uh, the photon that has traveled for 18 steps uh, really have traveled for, for 10, and then it started back to zero, and then to eight more. So at the end, if the photons are the same in the unit number, you get a score of five, which is really good. And the photons has a really uh, strong relation with the story of the other photon controlled by computer, and they can get absorbed by the plant. Otherwise, for example, if you score something like three, the photons still can interfere and get absorbed, but not as good as they were supposed to be to, to do at the end. And so this is the, the, the worst, no, the, the zero score is the worst you can get. And this is because there are five steps aside. Okay, I think. Okay. okay. Yes. Uh, yeah. Marilu, sorry, interrupted you. Go ahead. No, I was just uh, asking uh, Natasha or James whether they have uh, questions. Uh, sure. Uh, thank you so much, Nicola, for for your presentation. And as someone who actually, I, I see this as a puzzle game also. <laughs> like when it when it comes, it's it's really really fun, and I would love to play it. So that's kind of the first thing I just like. I want to do this path. Um, uh, one question only that came to my mind now, because there is this line that um, uh, the computer does. So you as a player, can you just pick that one? Like what happens if you pick that? So, like, or is it possible, is it not possible to pick that? So, sorry, can you, can you repeat, please? Uh, I didn't understand the, the question. Uh, 
Yeah. So the question is um, the path that the yeah. computer sets. I mean, can you, uh, as a player, pick that same? I mean, uh, path? You, when you, when you, as a player, choose one of the two paths, uh, the computer is forced to the other. So you can choose one or the other, and the computer chooses the other. Uh, okay. Yeah, and that's that's because the All protons, right. yeah. let's say, starts its journey inside the leaf uh, as a single entity, so it's just one photon. Uh, but after the first yeah. point, it gets yeah. superposed. So it's you can think about like it it splits into two different stories for the same photon, and he can experience two different paths in the same time. And if the paths are really similar. Uh, you get a, go a good score. If the paths are really different, you get a bad score. Yeah. That's all the way, that's all the explanation, aside from the, the let's say, mod 10 of these numbers. <laughs> I, I want to play, so I, I don't have other questions. That was kind of the only thing. That I'm like, okay, so what happens where, just to clarify also for, uh, like, Thank you. viewers. <laughs> Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, thanks for the presentation. It looks like a, a great puzzle game. Um, I'm wondering what's going on in the background to calculate the the best uh, path, and how how do you calculate what? Okay. Um, the path um, I mean, um, so the um, to get a, a little bit more technical, uh, the idea is that um, two, the two different photons uh, accumulate some phase difference along the, 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 the path. And so um, the, the best strategy to, I mean, uh, starting at the, at the beginning, the, the, um, the score is, is zero, just because uh, the difference is, sorry, it's five, because that's the, the, the zero difference between the phases of the two photons. As soon as you go, for example, the first step, the first step is one, and the other is two, the phase difference between these two uh, would, would be three, which is uh, not really good, and so on and so forth. And so the best strategy to, to win the game uh, would be to, to, to try to set up, uh, like at the final stages, so like in the middle of the path, try to, to, to think about what we are going to do afterwards, because the, the, the last steps are the real important, the really important ones in which you can really try to uh, go closer or, or yeah, closer to the, to the target score or the target so score modulus 10, because the, the formula that gives this number is uh, this number, like the target score, minus the score uh, achieved by the player, uh, modulus 10 to remove, like the, because the phases of the photon can go, go on, on circles, so you just re restart every time you, you go 10 steps along. And then this, the score, so that will be the opposite of what you see. So the, the best score will be zero in this way. So we just applied five minus this number <clears throat> to get a five when you are doing really great and zero when you're doing uh, really bad just for gameplay, uh, gameplay design uh, reasons. Did I understand your, your question? Okay, thank you. Yeah, and uh, it w I think it's a good idea to do it mod 10 and mod 2 pi <laughs> to uh, help the player. <laughs> yeah. Turn them out. <laughs> I mean, you, you, you think it would be better to display that or, or I mean, yeah, yeah mod 10, aside from uh, uh, conversely, mod 2 pi will be really difficult to understand, yeah. <laughs> But I, I also have a question for you. Do you think it's better to display the formulas, or do you think it's more easy to understand like this? Because we, we really try to, to do the best as we can to do that. Yeah, it's always a balance, because if you give overwhelming information, then people think they need to know it. But it's also good to have the information there. So uh, yeah, that's a, that's a difficult user interface problem. Probably some solution where you, the player has the ability to get it, but uh, they're not made to think that they need it. Yeah. yeah. So it's something that then they can use uh, to improve their performance in a way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you. 
Okay, so Nicola, many thanks uh, and uh, many thanks uh, to all uh, your team. Uh, and uh, we have to move on because we are behind schedule. Sure. And uh, so Thank thanks you. a lot, uh, Thank <laughs> Nicola. <you. laughs> and uh, we have a, a swap in our schedule for organization purposes. And uh, uh, the person who's next is uh, Massimo uh, Mannarelli. And uh, the, vid the video game is Man. Massimo, are you there? Uh, okay, then it seems that Massimo is not uh, yet uh, connected, so maybe uh, we could uh, uh, we could proceed first uh, with. Uh, it seems that Massimo is not uh, yet yeah. connected. Yeah. So this is really a community building. Here we are. Here we are. All the here. So we have a we have a, a feedback on our audio. So perhaps you should switch off a microphone or lower. Okay, now it, it seems uh, working. Okay. <laughs> Good. So, Massimo, please uh, go ahead. Uh, uh, you can also introduce uh, all of your mates. So, Massimo, please uh, go can ahead. Can you hear us now? Uh, yes. You can also introduce uh, all of your Okay. So as you as you can see, this has been a. Uh, uh, yes. Okay. So as you as you can see, this has been a. Uh, uh, Massimo, you should. Uh, Massimo, I think that you should. Uh, Massimo, I think that you should uh, uh, switch off. Maybe you have another window open, uh, uh, maybe on uh, streaming or something like that. Yes, we, now we probably solve the, the problem. Okay. Can but you? Is very... <laughs> okay, now very good. Is much better. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but uh, the crowd of all the team, uh, <laughs> it's not so easy. <laughs> okay, very good. Um, so this has been a. Uh, uh, done by team number eight and uh, actually we managed to uh, do it uh, in person instead of uh, online and uh, we um, uh, used the uh, drawings and uh, ideas uh, of uh, our kids and uh, so this is Massimo and this is uh, Adriano. Adriano and uh, the kids uh, just uh, disappeared. Now all around the running here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> And um, uh, actually, also uh, our wives contributed to this uh, uh, the, uh, development. So the idea was basically um, that, uh, as uh, uh, we as we know, I mean, our our mind works uh, by uh, cooperative uh, uh, phenomena, uh, as well as possibly by uh, quantum effects. Uh, and uh, it's kind of tailored to uh, understand the world we have around. Uh, but what would happen uh, if the world was uh, reversed? Uh, as an example, what would happen if the, 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 the arrow of uh, time went in the, the opposite direction? And uh, uh, would we be able to understand that actually uh, that, that thing is going on? And the thing is that the quantum mechanics uh, is invariant by uh, time. Uh, I mean, you can put time in uh, a t with minus t, and the uh, quantum field theory remains the same. As, uh, uh, but, uh, of course, phenomena that around us uh, 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 look like impossible, and so in our, in our little uh, little game, which is a platformer game, uh, we basically uh, build upon this uh, this uh, this idea, and uh, uh, of course we use the uh, um, much of the, the, the drawings done by the kids. Actually, uh, there's also a third family which is not here right now, uh, which all, they also contributed to the to the drawing. So it was made by seven kids and. Uh, uh, six parents. So, <laughs> so it was a, 
it was really hard. I mean, I, I have to say that at the end we had many more drawings than uh, than needed. Yes. And uh, <laughs> many ideas, many ideas. And uh, actually, Adriano uh, managed to put it in the in the in the video game, which maybe now we can show. Probably, uh, I have to share the screen. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you, we we have not a um, long time, so you you have um, five minutes for your okay. presentation. It's okay, class. it's okay. But we also. Oh no. Uh, uh, it seems I need uh, something uh, to to share the screen in Chrome. Sorry. Eh? I, 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 let me just, uh, let me just see if I can solve uh, very quickly. Okay, let me check again. I try again. Massimo, maybe in the meanwhile you could uh, uh, present yourself uh, and Adriano. Uh, so yeah. Uh, the competencies uh, that are in the, in yeah. the team. I'm a... Uh, I'm a physicist and uh, I work. Can you see? Can you see the screen now? Yeah, yeah, yeah we can. Okay, yeah, yeah. So uh, actually, so I'm. Uh, yeah, but sh show sh show the game because we have just five minutes left. I guess something like that. Okay, I am going to present the, the game and then. Uh, anyway, I'm a, a software developer. Uh, this is uh, just a web-based web uh, game where um, our hero is uh, running and jumping uh, on uh, on a place where something is happening okay and then uh, at a given point in time a strange thing happens uh, because the time is reversed and what they, uh, whatever you see in a normal situation like now we have a fantastic uh, fireworks made by some of our team by yeah, Daniela, by, my by Daniela, wife. by <laughs> wow, so important. That she she told us to mention uh, her, and uh, okay, we have a volcano and uh, we have uh, the smoke uh, and so on and so and so on. Just to uh, again restart the game, just to see the also airplane flying away. The volcano is uh, erupting. And uh, we go, we, we are uh, jumping uh, all around uh, like a classical platformer. And uh, we reach the, 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 uh, the end of the level. Then we start again, we are, it seems like before, but uh, the time is reversed. So whatever we have seen uh, in, um, in the first uh, level, we see here on the contrary, the volcano is uh, around it. The contrary, the airplane is going that you know, very particular and uh, effect. Uh, we wow, walk very, a lot, very deep, very deep uh, effect, deep like up. this one. You know, the, the smoke is going inside, and the fireworks works at reverse level. That is more or less so. The we uh, I can I can um, enjoy a lot to to uh, to realize uh, these uh, particular ideas that you can imagine comes uh, from uh, from kids mostly, and uh, I enjoyed also to join the idea of uh, Massimo to uh, to uh, put in this classical platformer game yeah. uh, some uh, quantum ideas. And thanks to Mary Lou because uh, I mean she, she just uh, told me about this uh, internet festival and this uh, game jam, and so we actually jamming with uh, jamming with kids was uh, was really funny. Uh, uh, let us, uh, if you agree, if you have some other question, we I can uh, share the screen. But let us uh, for the kids and uh, <laughs> they want to present. Yeah, of course, they want the names, uh, the names of the kids, of course, uh, everyone. Daniela, we, uh, we we just had some ideas. Uh, no, yeah, I mean, the, 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 in the future development, there will be uh, another character with the uh, opposite. Uh, this is Marina. 
Hello. How is your Hello. name? Hello. 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 Okay. <laughs> and the other guys are, so I don't know, running. Uh, uh, still, uh, still not. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, there's a development of this, which is like the character meeting himself, you know? It's a small being moving uh, in, the, in reverse. And so, yes, to avoid to, to, to catch up with himself, because otherwise, I mean, they will annihilate. And uh, so, they, but they still, I mean, this is work in progress. Yes, for, for the moment, we, in our, this draft uh, project, we just arrived to, to change the, the electron, if you can say, to the positron. To the positron. There's another drawing done in the meantime by my kid. <laughs> so, yeah. so, indeed, the first question would have been whether you wrote the equations to solve the space time. Sorry, I didn't catch it, uh, the question. Either the first question uh, would have been uh, whether you wrote the equations uh, to fold the space time for this. Uh... Oh, uh, the, the <laughs> questions uh, uh, for the for the time, just for the time. <laughs> it was very easy because uh, indeed there is some uh, a question that, that is uh, simply time you take to arrive to the end. It is exactly the same you will have uh, to the to the reverse time. Okay. <laughs> if you take 10, 10 seconds, uh, then uh, the volcano will erupt uh, uh, in, in inverted in 10 seconds. If you take uh, 30 seconds and so on, the same for airplanes and so on. Okay, so let, let's, uh, let's hear whether James and Natasha have questions, comments. Um, so, uh, I, I I just been playing it during the presentation, and I think I've done it about ten times now. I have to apologise to whoever is the character because I did make them fall in the water a few times. But uh, yeah, I, I really like the 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 game, and um, I, I'd like to visit that castle and watch the fireworks sometime. Um, yeah, but I was just wondering what. Uh, oh, very to make a, a lot <laughs> of patience, a lot of patience, uh, <laughs> because the, we of course uh, ask to kids to just draw, and then we in the some uh, I don't know if you know GIMP, the the famous GNOME uh, image manipulation program. It's yeah. a classical program to manipulate images, and then uh, realize uh, frames right. like uh, like in a cartoon. And then uh, we use inside, uh, if you're talking about technical things, um, use, uh, I develop, developed uh, a, a JavaScript framework uh, for, for um, realize the game uh, on the browser and also in mobile browsers. I took uh, the ideas from uh, a prior uh, project is uh, called the Game Query. I expanded that library. And of course it is uh, a bit, easy whenever you have the, the, the sprites uh, to put inside a, in this framework, whatever you would like. To add for, for the, the game performer is already uh, ready as a framework. Uh, the, the, the man, most of the work is to put the, the sprites and to realize the sprites. Yeah. Okay, thank you. No, no, you're welcome. Yes, and thank you so much for the presentation. And uh, to be honest, this is how also in our house things look like in the, in the game, because my daughter also uh, is a big part, but also a bunch of our pets as well as uh, uh, <laughs> contribute to our game design on a daily basis. Um, excellent work on the game. Uh, as, as James already said, like, I want to play this and, and I want to keep trying and keep doing stuff and love the style. So whoever is the <laughs> artist, yeah, that's that. Absolutely perfect. Uh, so yeah, con consider, you know, like getting this as a career choice possibly for, yeah. for the family members. Um, definitely there is a, a, a lot of potential and we need more talent. So yes, recruitment. <laughs> Excellent. Thanks. Thanks a lot. All right, so uh, many, many thanks, uh, Adriano and, uh, and Massimo and uh, every one of the family members. The kids have uh, been just great and uh, your wives. Uh, you didn't mention their names, though, huh? 
so we oh, yeah. found their names too. Uh, Paola, which is a, a bit shy, is not. Uh, well, we can show her. Can show her. <laughs> okay, Paola. Hello, Paola. And uh, Daniela, Daniela, which is over there. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello, Daniela. Oh, but there, is, oh, there is an additional family that, that now is not here that also helped. There are three more kids. Oh, three more kids and a big uh, team. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so thanks a lot. We, I think we should Bye. move on. Bye. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Sabrina, would you like to introduce the next team? Sure. Uh, ready uh, to go to the next, uh, to the next team. Uh, the next speaker um, is, uh, I have it here, Francesco Baldino presenting Team 4. And the Team 4 team is, uh, oh, the name of the game is Potatoes Quest. Okay, uh, hello, I'm Francesco Baldino. I'll, I'll share the screen now. Um, sorry, I didn't do it before. So can you see the ah, can you see the presentation? Yes, we do. Okay, I can see you. Okay, so um, my name is Francesco Baldino. Uh, um, my teammate was Lugina Mazzone. We are both uh, mathematics students in the uh, University of Pisa, and our game was is uh, Potatoes Quest. I'll now show it to you. Um, how do I? Okay, nope. <laughs> Sorry. Um, the um, theme that we chose that we chose was the third theme, um, the one about uh, quantum physics and the brain. Um, we decided to explore, um, like we decided to choose uh, um, some. I'm sorry, I, I really didn't prepare this. <laughs> um, like the game we made uh, didn't um, explore in depth um, some. Um, Physics in quantum physics, we decided we decide to take some phenomena uh, of, of quantum physics and try to translate them in uh, uh, gameplay or something. So it's it's probably not formally correct, but we thought that the the ideas we, we took would make a good um, good um, gameplay. Uh, so the we choose the third team, and the main part of the game is about um, an old scientist. Uh, so it's. Um, Set in a future where um, we've discovered discovered that um, you can simulate a brain with a quantum computer. The only thing that stops you is to give it enough enough uh, energy. Um, the main character, the main game loop, is a main character trying to give uh, enough energy to a computer to simulate um, a brain. And the way he does it is um, basically getting potatoes and. Uh, giving like making making a, a potato computer basically. We we thought it was you know some funny joke, <laughs> and now the, that's the main theme. But uh, the actual game kind of develops on some more uh, different different quantum physics phenomena that we took as an inspiration, mm -hmm. and I'll now show it to you. Uh, so the game is a puzzle game. Um, I would say it's kind of uh, inspired from the video game Portal. As in, uh, it's a um, room, uh, room puzzle game where there are some uh, physics that should not happen, but in that reality happens. And you have to uh, kind of um, understand how that logic works to solve the puzzle. Uh, the quantum physics phenomena that we um, chose to use uh, for this puzzle are the um, uh, wave particle dualism. Basically, uh, the main character, uh, the, the premise is that the main character discovered a way to um, make uh, quantum physics phenomena happen on a um, macro scale level, like a human size level. So you have a main character that can uh, can be seen both as a particle and as a wave. And when you see him as a wave, you have um, Basically, you have uncertainty uncertainty on his position, and that translates in game in the in a game mechanic that is you have a multiple version of that character that moves sim simultaneously in different rooms. Uh, another uh, phenomenon that we have uh, decided to use is the quantum tunneling. Basically, there are some walls that you can only pass through if you see that character in his wave form and not in his uh, particle form. And then the last um, phenomena that we decide to uh, use is the 
power exclusion, uh, exclusion principle. Uh, that's not part of the main game. It's only part of the last level, which is a bit different. And I, I, I hope I'll, I'll have enough time to show you what it looks like because it's really different. It's basically uh, like a quantum tic tac toe. Uh, I'll show you. <laughs> Um, mm -hmm. So, um, we had, um, this was our first game jam and we had a, a, little, bit, a little bit of a difficult time to handle the, uh, the time to, be, to make the game. The, the, um, the initial idea was like this super me mega project of uh, cool mega, like, like a lot of puzzles mm -hmm. and then uh, we only had time to make uh, four of them, but I think they turned out quite good. I'll um, like after this slide, I'll show you um, one minute of gameplay. Um, I think they turned out good, especially well, all of them, because the first one I think they're good to introduce you to the game mechanics, because again they're a bit different from like real physics, so you you'll have to get used to them, and then. The last puzzle, I, I think they're not too easy nor too difficult. They're just good puzzles. Uh, the last level, I, I suddenly I don't have a video of the last level. I just have a screenshot, but I'll try to sh to explain it to you as best as I can. Because uh, again, we had some um, time issues, so the the presentation is a bit short, and the gameplay is just one minute of gameplay. But I'll do my best. Um, uh, and show. Do you see a video? Yes. Okay. So uh, the <coughs> the video just starts with um, like the um, um, lower premise of uh, with just the lower premise of the video game, which is just this uh, old physicist, physicist explaining why he has to just do what he does, and then in a short while we should get to the first level, and we will get we see what the game looks like. And that's just um, fun. Okay, so this is the first level. Um, here it says that you can press Q to see and see what like the, what happens. The, uh, that is uh, what he was able to discover. I'll show it just briefly again. He basically turns. Um, he, he can split between being either a physical person or um, particles that move at, uh, that move at the same time. And the thing is, um, you can see my mouse, yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, this this kind of barriers, uh, they are the you know quantum tunneling parts of the game. That is, uh, if he was a physical particle and he was in, let's say, in the green room, he wouldn't be able to um, pass those um, barriers. Uh, another thing that we added, which should um, appear like. He should, talk, should, talk, should talk about it right now. Uh, are some observer? Uh, we thought that um, it would make a good, a good uh, gameplay mechanic. That, um, that that's just what happened. If he was in this wave waveform and then passed uh, passed on over an observer, he would be like observed, and then it would collapse in one single position. That is where it was um, observed, and that kind of. Um, that's kind of used as a um, um, teleportation mechanic uh, be between rooms. Because if you were to uh, become a wave and then a particle, you'd be in the same room. But if you became a wave and then a wave, like your wave in another room was seen by an observer, you'd be you'd be collapsing in that room. That is, and that's kind of why we used it. And. Then it's just the potatoes mechanic. You have to collect them and uh, um, bring them in a um, potato collector, open the door, and then it's just we we just put like um, some small piece of paper to explain a bit about this word because otherwise I like so so it makes more sense for the player. And now, if I have time, I will show you just like um, just a frame of the last level uh, as. Uh, I expect, like I, I won't go into the story, but the main part of the last level is um, some kind of quantum tic tac toe. Now, I th I generally think the idea is really interesting, but sadly we didn't have en enough time to um, actually make it. So um, sometimes you win the game, and the game doesn't recognize you win. 
So that's kind of not ideal. And also, I think it would have been um, much uh, like much more enjoyable if we were able to make um, an, an algorithm or an AI for the computer to play because you're playing against the computer. And the the only easy way we could make it is for him to play um, random. Ra random positions. So that's not really interesting. But I think it. Um, like if played with um, with some logic, it would be some very interesting. Now, what's the difference between uh, this um, version of tic-tac-toe and the main tic-tac-toe is that, okay, first of all, um, can you see all of it? No, you can't. Um, okay, I, I again, I don't know how to show it to you, but it's um, four, um, it's, it's a four by four, not a three by three. So that's one difference. But the main difference is that uh, you as a player uh, can play um, one of these two moves. Now, one move that is the arrow down is just um, you know your, your token, like as if you were as if you are the X player and plays and places X. So your turn, you can choose to um, place one of those. Uh, the second move you can do is uh, to place um, I don't know, like a, a like like a double arrow, as in. Like a, like a super uh, like a super position token. That is, you can place um, two of those. Uh, in, like you, you can place either one of those or two of those, and then on the on the board you have this kind of double arrows. The thing that happens, and it's uh, why we got kind of inspired from the um, Pauli exp uh, Pauli exclusions principle, is that if you have a double arrow and then someone places an arrow, like a, like a one arrow uh, next to a double arrow, the double arrow collapses to the opposite of the um, arrow that was placed. I think that's interesting because uh, that way you can, you can either place one of your arrows and you know, go for your win, or you can place a double arrow and Make up something that doesn't strictly stop your your, your opponent from from playing. Let's say, like in this position, but if it does, it kind of gives you a big advantage because you can put um, I don't know, like it's just an idea. You can put one here and one here in diagonal, which means if he plays here or here, then in one turn you you'd win like two tokens, which is um, just a new way of playing tic tac toe. <laughs> So that's... Thank you very much. Thanks. This was very interesting. I really would like to uh, to try the, especially the last one. I got <laughs> very curious. Um, uh, but uh, I think that we can uh, now um, ask uh, uh, James uh, and Natasha uh, if they have specific questions. Um. <clears throat> so yeah, yeah. Thanks for the presentation. Uh, the first bit reminded me a lot of uh, books I used to read when I was a kid. Sort of fiction that tried to introduce some aspects of quantum or other hard phenomenon, but as a game. So that seems really cool. Maybe it will inspire a new generation of of quantum people. And uh, yeah, so the I like the idea behind the tic tac toe as well. As I said in my presentation the other day. Um, yeah, it was a, it was one of the early things that, that was done in computer games, so it's an interesting thing to explore. Um, so I think there are some other people who have done tic tac toes, so maybe you'd be interested in looking at them as you develop more. Um, but yeah, I just giving those comments was the main thing I wanted to say. I don't think I have any specific questions, Thank but you. great job. Thank Thanks. Likewise, I mean, I I, I want to play, especially the last <laughs> kind of tic tac toe, and and um, love the story. Potato Tour 3000, was it so? Amazing. Uh, no, definitely story is something that uh, gives even more, you know, this sort of emotional connection to whatever experience there is, especially from the quantum side and, and gets this, you know, like from the player's engagement more. Uh, so so love the love the story bit. And, and uh, I, I, will, I hope you would continue working on this game forward. Uh, Tic-tac-toe is also one of those, like, for example, in the game design course that I'm teaching at university, uh, it's one of those, like, most common things, like, because the, the as a game itself, it, it has uh, a lot of issues uh, designer-wise, so very interesting approach, and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to see more of uh, this, I, I said, I hope you actually continue 
working on this game forward. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. And Francesco, is that true that uh, you didn't have a quantum physicist in the team, right? Uh, okay. So you made everything yourself, which means that at the mathematics... Okay, no, that... <laughs> Uh, the, uh, as physicists okay, we are here's the thing. Uh, we decided not to have um, phys quantum physicists in um, our team because my roommate, my roommate is one of the mentors. So I just like, went there, went next door and asked him something. So yeah, that, that yeah. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> it was just a joke. Okay, many thanks, Francesco, and thanks to you, okay. all, uh, all the team. Okay? Hi. Just <laughs> uh, yeah, to move on. <laughs> oh, hi. Uh, great, <laughs> great job. Thanks. Okay, so it's time to move on. Uh, we are almost on schedule, uh, and the next uh, team will be Team Six. Uh, Boris Sokolov, uh, Boris, are you there? And uh, the the title of the game. Is yeah, Quantum hi everybody. Life. So yeah, that's uh, the title of our game. Hi. And uh, <clears throat> so, what can I say about? It? I guess I can just move. I mean, first, I'm going to ask if you can hear me well. Yes. All right, cool. So yeah, I I can just uh, turn on the presentation right here. Um, for that, mm -hmm. I'll have to share the screen. Uh, fire screen, yeah. Okay, I guess it's visible, right? Is it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, sorry. Okay, sorry. so uh, so we chose this topic uh, uh, because we are interested in this uh, game of life. So it's like a cellular uh, uh, automata. Which uh, in which uh, you have like a grid of uh, uh, well, just a grid uh, in some space, and you can choose the tiling of this grid. It could be uh, in the original game of life, it's a rectangular grid, and we chose a hexagonal uh, a bit because of aesthetic reasons, but also because uh, we're using the uh, quantum computer. And if you have a grid which is hexagonal, then you have six neighbors instead of eight, and it's like uh, calculationally, computationally more uh, feasible to do. <clears throat> and uh, so, yeah, the point of this game is, uh, is that, uh, oh, okay, probably I should say more about the cellular automata. So the point of cellular automata is that you have, uh, 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 on this grid, you have uh, uh, each cell in the grid can have uh, uh, some states so for example zero and one and based on the states of the neighbors in the next iteration you can uh, either flip this uh, state or uh, i don't know go to zero or go to one so you can set the rules as uh, as much as you like you can change them and you can invent whatever rules you want and so what we did is uh, that we uh, made the rules which are uh, based on quantum physics so each cell is a uh, has a neighborhood of uh, six cells like i don't know if uh, maybe here is not so well visible so if you imagine this cell it will have like six neighbors i don't know if you can see my mouse but okay yeah yeah we can see it uh, and and uh, uh so it means it uh, the system will have uh, let's say seven qubits and these qubits can have like interactions uh, that you decide what what they are. And we were playing a bit with the, the types of interactions and uh, uh, changing them and stuff to uh, have uh, some rules which would like make a game. <clears throat> okay, so uh, this uh, first slide is uh, has a, qu a quote by Richard Feynman, who's a quantum, very famous quantum physicist. And he, uh, here in the quote, he says that uh, if you would like to simulate nature, uh, you would have to simulate it, uh, well, in a quantum mechanical way, because if you don't, then you're missing a lot of uh, uh, phenomena out, like completely. 
and uh, then it's not an accurate simulation. And as you maybe know, like that uh, simulating a quantum phenomena on a classical computer is very hard. It's actually exponentially hard in many senses, like both in time and in memory. So, for, for example, if you want to simulate a molecule of penicillin completely, you would need more atoms of memory than there is uh, space in the uh, than there's atoms in the universe. So, but it's it's impossible just to write the state of this uh, penicillin molecule. Not to mention actually uh, operating it and finding like uh, <clears throat> configurations that you want. So you would really need quantum computers to have these simulations. Uh, what's next? So this is our team. Uh, we had the, me. I, I was the quantum physicist. I was also the. Uh, I was coding on the on Qiskit. Then we have Victor Minion, who is a coder, and uh, Sonia Minna, who is a, a graphic artist, and uh, Sabrina Maniscalco, who is the also in the uh, as an organizer in the this game jam is a professor of quantum physics and my supervisor so yeah well i'll just go slide by slide so quantum physics study is the fundamental law of our universe describing the behavior of its constituents and even the early instance in which our universe was created uh the name quantum tree of life came from this uh connections to uh, ancient cultures uh, where many cultures had uh, as a, let's say, the source of life or and of everything, uh, they had as a source a tree. So, uh, for example, for Scandinavians, there was this big dressel. I don't know how to spell it, probably. And in other uh, cultures, there was like this tree of knowledge and the uh, tree of life. Like in the, uh, in the Bible, there's also this tree of knowledge and stuff like that. <clears throat> and uh, we decided to have this connection uh, both to uh, to uh, <clears throat> underline the fundamental role of quantum physics and uh, uh, and its co inseparable connections to basic laws of nature with the uh, with well well phenomena such as life and even maybe consciousness. So that's the uh, or origin of the name and the. Uh, the aesthetic of the game and also because i mean tree is alive so yeah, yeah there is also that uh so the gameplay is based very much on the this conway's game of life with uh, the changed rules as i said so the rules can be decided by a real quantum computer like uh, we could take circuits like these and uh, see what they do so they have like each each of them has seven qubits and uh, one of them represents the qubit which uh, ends up being the well ends up measured and then its state is given out uh, to the next iteration mm. what else uh, because uh, because i mean of course it would be ideal to have like a huge grid simulated completely on a quantum computer with all these quantum correlations uh, uh, being transferred from one place, one end of the board to another. Uh, but unfortunately, quantum computers are not there quite yet. So you would need, uh, well, as many qubits, at least as there are uh, cells on the board. And uh, the simulation would take some time. So we decided to uh, limit ourselves only with the immediate neighborhood of each cell. And then on the, uh, before the next iteration, we'll do a measurement. So the evolution in between the, uh, during an iteration is a quantum, but then the, there's a classical, uh, well, there's a measurement, which turns this uh, information into classical information, which we then give to the next uh, uh, iteration as, a, as an input state. Uh, and the goal of the game is to uh, to to pick cells which are active. Actually, we have three uh, states in uh, at the moment. We have uh, inactive, then uh, superposition of active and inactive, and uh, one so active. In principle, this uh, we could have uh, any quantum state as an input. 
but then it was a bit too complicated to uh, to represent and uh, uh, actually, well, well, okay, it was a bit complicated, let's say. And <clears throat> but it's it's uh, of course possible, and it is of course possible to uh, uh, expand the the area of a uh, uh, neighborhood of each cell if we have uh, better devices. So for for this uh, in in this particular game, we uh, ran the uh, all the rules, uh, which are uh, also all the possibilities, which is three to the power of seven, on the quantum computer or simulator to get them beforehand, uh, because at the end they are measured anyway. So it doesn't really uh, you don't have to keep the quantum state for more than one iteration, mm -hmm. and because it would it. In, remove the lag of well uh, contacting the uh, quantum computer for each iteration uh, separately and we can pre-calculate all of them beforehand and the goal of the game is to uh, you get a state here that you need to uh, get and by placing some uh, initial state here you need to uh, in some iterations to achieve this state and of course by changing these rules so these uh, circuits which we are actually not entirely decided uh, uh, on. We haven't decided which ones we will pick. So we just we pick the ones which are the most, let's say, uh, playable. And uh, in principle, the ones that we picked now are a mixture, a slight mixture of the Conway's rules and the quantum rules. So uh, the game picks a specific set of uh, ga uh, gates depending on how many neighbors the cell has and this is done for gameplay reasons because we haven't managed uh, to find uh, like a set of rules which would be like the only one that you would need but this is uh, just a matter of finding them and uh, I, we, we only tried this with like very basic gates so x y z h and c naughts and uh, perhaps with some uh, well um, parameterized rotations and stuff like that, there would be a better solution to this. Um, and of course, uh, yeah. So uh, the point of the game is uh, to find find this, the final state. And the question that you will uh, answer is whether nature computes itself or and how. And here I can, uh, in a minute, show a bit of gameplay in a minute which is uh, not here, but uh... oh, yeah, it is here. So here you can set an initial state by clicking once or twice, and you have a certain uh, limited uh, number of uh, well cells that you can place. And here's the goal state that you need to achieve. So for example, I, I, I'm not going to show you the solution. And of course, if you place it, it's not going to count if you place it like this. But I'll, I'll, I'll just put some random stuff and show what happens. So here you proceed to the next one. And the board is kind of like wrapped around. So uh, uh, the in physics terms, the boundary conditions are periodic. So if you go to the left, you come out to the right. And if you go to the top, you come out to the bottom. It's kind of like in these old games where you fly around and shoot asteroids. And you can have a lot of these fancy configurations and see what happens. Like this was, this, even though there were like a lot of uh, cells, they just vanished very quickly. And this is this is just the one single set of rules that we chose. So in principle, we can do a lot of uh, very interesting looking things. So yeah, I guess that's it for the presentation. And if you have any questions, many thanks, Boris. It was it was very it was very interesting uh, and uh, really a great uh, a great great idea. So let us uh, ask uh, first uh, Natasha and James whether they have uh, questions. 
of comments. Um, to again oh, what you said, like this is this is uh, like it's impressive and it's, it seems really polished. <laughs> so ship it, <laughs> publish the game. It's pretty much ready for for yeah, put it out there. But yeah, definitely want to yeah, play. Cool. It. So that's kind of the, the otherwise no questions. Everything like excellent presentation. So, yeah, like, this is so actually. Much. We were thinking about putting it out on mo mobile uh, platforms as well because it's almost ready for that. There's not so much to change about it, and it would, yeah. it would, it's already like in this vertical format. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean it's just like, and it works. I mean, obviously, some here and there, obviously, it would be yeah, good to course. do some uh, <laughs> testing. Uh, but but otherwise, yeah. I mean the the games looks, especially looks. I mean the graphics look Thanks. amazing. So it's like. You're ready to Thank go. You. Hey, hey, Boris. Um, thanks for the presentation. It looks great. Uh, I was just wondering, given that you pre-compute some of the stuff, would it be uh, reasonable to actually run it on real quantum hardware, at least as an option? Well, actually, I, I was. That was the original plan, but uh, okay. Uh, so the uh, the three. Well, there's two thousand, almost two thousand two hundred combinations. And if uh, I put this many things in a queue, I, I don't think it's going to like, it wasn't in the time frame of the jam. I mean, it, I could have put it yeah. in the Singapore, uh, uh, IBM Singapore, but it was in maintenance mode, so I couldn't do anything with that. Because it allows, I think, 900 circuits at a time or something. But yeah, this, is the, uh, this was the idea originally, so that we would test it, that it kind of like works on the, uh, on the simulator, and then we just uh, pre-compute it on the real device. Yeah. That's great. Thanks. Okay, so um, actually, it was uh, as Natasha said, the great uh, the the graphics, uh, but also great the physics. So I wanted to ask you whether, so in principle, uh, uh, if I understand, uh, you could also put in a menu uh, different possibilities about the interactions between uh, uh, either adjacent uh, cells or. Uh, more than uh, nearest neighbor, um, uh, next to nearest neighbor cells, right? Yeah, of course. I mean, it's it's, uh, it's all super configurable. You could have, uh, uh, like, for example, we have these, uh, uh, like, if you imagine this grid, so, for example, you could have C nodes, uh, like, in every consecutive qubits. You could have them in every... Like with, between with a uh, one qubit in between, with three uh, with two qubits in between, stuff like that. We could have the connections and various uh, con connections to the central qubit in various configurations. You could have all these local gates, local operations, uh, and that's only for the six uh, uh, neighbors. And of course, if you invoke more neighbors, of which there are, I think, twelve or thirteen, like, something like that, twelve or thirteen like second degree neighbors, uh, then there is like. Yeah, you, you can do a lot, a lot of uh, various uh, options. I found also the, the idea of the six uh, very, very nice of the hexagonal uh, uh, configuration geometry because it also reminds about life, right? So mm. uh, on one side the yeah. bees, on, uh, on the other side uh, uh, these, uh, these, these um, aromatic rings that uh, play play a role everywhere uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, right in biology so that, that was really great and one more question uh, very rapid uh, whether uh, you, you you can imagine uh, to uh, to introduce uh, here and there a, a kind of reduction to uh, a classical instead uh, classical uh, dynamics uh, or behavior that could uh, make the the rules uh, well, this is actually what we're doing at the moment uh, because yeah. the rules, the, the completely quantum rules, they don't, uh, they, they're, they, for some reason, the ones that we have tried, and uh, we haven't tried that many, but uh, because of lack of time, because you have to pre-calculate all of their poss possibilities and stuff like that. But the ones that we have tried, uh, for example, either one of them, uh, uh, one of the states covers the whole playing field, and then we cannot do anything because uh, it, it just eats everything. Or there's uh, there, there's just like oscillations happening, or there's like a wave which also like just goes around and oscillates all the time, and then there's nothing. It's it's not okay. like uh, playable in the sense. So we did introduce uh, it's it's like semi-classical uh, rules which uh, 
pick pick a quantum rule depending on the number of neighbors, which is uh, you, well, it, it's you don't we don't measure qua the number of neighbors uh, uh, in a quantum way. We measure it classically. Okay. So yeah, it's a mixture at the moment. Okay, thanks. And that, and that melts and that much more clear for me too. Okay, so I don't know whether there are other uh, questions, comments from the jury. Otherwise, we thanks again, uh, Boris and uh, all, uh, all his team, a wonderful team, and uh, we can move on um, to all the right. next uh, presenter. Thank you. Uh, we are uh, again uh, something like on schedule. Sabrina, would you like to introduce the next? Sure. Um, the next one is uh, Francesco Sorace, Team 7. And um, Francesco, uh, the name of, of the game by Francesco is um, Wild Goose Chase. Hello. Francesco. I'm Francesco, Hi. I'm uh, here to present the game Wild Goose Chase. And um, I don't like to take to say seriously the um, the themes. It was uh, difficult making a stupid game with uh, quantum physicists uh, in, uh, in in our team, but uh, I'm proud to say that I rose to the occasion. This is the game. Uh, Uh, do you see my screen? Yes, okay. Um, this is a wild goose chase where you are an electron that needs to not be seen or break the rules of physics, the strong everything. That's the idea uh, that, um, that we had. It began with, um, with the quantum computing because um, um, my professor from university liked to talk about uh, um, uh, liked to explain about uh, how um, the memory uh, of uh, NAND works uh, by um, making this story about electrons as um, a prisoner in the castle of if of Count of Monte Cristo. It was uh, a funny and uh, informational story and uh, it uh, remained with me in the last 10 years. So I wanted to make a stealth game where the electron is uh, hiding from Heisenberg uh, in, inside this castle. Unfortunately, it was everything, um, every single uh, thing about uh, the, that was uh, wrong. That's uh, a personal attack from the love of nature towards myself, I, I have to admit. That's, uh, I don't understand how, how can uh, nature do this to me, but uh, it's like that, so we had to change everything. So uh, I'd like to thank uh, Gloria Ciconofri and Matteo Chiappini for their help, because uh, really we had, uh, we had uh, the entire team uh, very use um, hole in our uh, understanding. So if you see any errors or probably horrors, those are all mine because uh, I didn't have the time uh, to, to have um, the last uh, part uh, proofread. You can see our uh, advanced technology um, needed to, <laughs> to catch the electron, an autovelox, a tutor, a cam, and a wall. That's uh, our obstacles uh, to our uh, to our um, uh, goal of remaining undetected. Uh, this is the part that gave me the most trouble because um, we were trying to um, uh, keep the principle of indetermination in mind when we did this game. So uh, we had uh, to. Um, uh, to how can I say juggle the problem of not being able of having a um, precise position or a precise momentum. Uh, we resolved this um, this problem resolved in uh, in a, a very 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 late sense 
using uh, a delta. Uh, when uh, maybe it's better if I start the video, you will understand better. You can see we have our electron or um, the space where the, the electron should be, that is our uh, blue cube. And the, the speed is the blue uh, holder, handle, sorry. Uh, the speed is actually random. It's uh, random, it can be whatever um, speed inside those two red handles that are around the a chosen velocity that you can um, uh, set with the slider. Now I'm avoiding the wall. That's the main mechanic. You can augment the probability or uh, the space where it's probable where you are. Doing so, you reduce uh, um, the delta of the momentum. That way you can be more sure of your um, of your actual speed. That's uh, uh, that's needed to pass a uh, different obstacle. Returning uh, before, you can see the tutor needs you to pass speedily. If you stay on the uh, on the um, um, on its area for too long, um, you will lose. The wall is more simple, you can avoid it, but you can also quantum tunneling it as long as you are large enough. It's interesting, the most interesting is the autovelox that recognizes your speed, so you will lose as long as your delta is too. Uh, too little, and in the and uh, the cam, but that just avoid the spotlight. Nothing uh, particularly difficult, and uh, nothing. You have destroyed the universe. That's it. It's just an, an infinite run game. Oh. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Francesco. Um, let's see what James and Natasha want to ask you. Uh, hi, uh, thanks for the presentation. It looks like a, a nice universe to explore. It looks like a nice way of uh, explore, um, interacting with uh, the uncertainty principle. Um, I'm sorry that the universe had decided to uh, attack you throughout. Uh, so um, even though it's enough just to look at the uncertainty principle, did you think about how you might also have game mechanics based on something like superposition? Uh, we were, um, uh, the idea were, was given to us by one of the mentors that helped us because uh, I didn't have the, man, the biggest knowledge, knowledge about uh, the, the argument. It was uh, difficult for me to understand um, how to um, make a game that is something that must be understood and must give uh, um, uh, a certain type of information while uh, keeping uh, the, um, the uncertainty of uh, quantum mechanic. It's uh, difficult because when you are thinking about a game, um, for me, a game is about the choice. You, have, you need to give the, inform, the exact information to the player so that he can make an informed choice. Not being able of giving all the information was a big hurdle for me. It was interesting, uh, I have to say, but I uh, would have never thought about it in, by myself. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, that's some... Uh... They're, they're kind of the challenges of building quantum games. Uh, uh, but you seem to have done a good job with the uncertainty principle. So thanks for that. Thank you also for my behalf. Uh, on uh, This is really, <laughs> really interesting, especially when it comes to, like I, I see the, from the 
kind of gain perspective, a lot of uh, opportunities also for, um, you know, as, as potentially, you know, a, a racing game. And it reminded me of the whole boom now with the, uh, you know, fall guys and all that. So basically, have you considered, my only question is, have you considered making possibly multiplayer when it comes to even having two players just uh, figuring out their stuff around? Um, or was it always meant to be single player? It was always meant to be single player. I didn't think about it. I had, I really had a lot of trouble even thinking, not as much doing, but thinking about it in single player. It was uh, really strange and um, interesting. Yeah, that, that is actually, even without the quantum, game development is usually <laughs> kind of strange and <laughs> interesting. Um, but yeah, I, I, just as I said, like, it can be something as a, uh, local co-op or um, it doesn't have to be a competition it can be also a co-op that sort of like you are uh, besides like having these cameras and so on could be that you are kind of trying to wiggle through uh, trick trick these obstacles and whatnot so there's a lot of design wise um, uh, opportunities to continue developing this game uh, otherwise looks really great and I'm looking forward to play it. thank you thank you All right, so many, many, many thanks also to all uh, your team. Uh, and uh, let's tie, let's um, move on uh, to the last, uh, well, actually, I don't know whether it will be really the last uh, presentation. And uh, please, uh, Paolo Braccia, if you are uh, in. Yeah, uh, uh, can you hear and see me? Hello, okay. Paolo, and uh, yeah, we can see you. And uh, the title of your game is very, very appealing. Is uh, yeah. Milk is Quantum. Okay, so how Please do I add. share? Okay, share uh, uh, screen. This way you are viewing. Okay, hold my screen. So I should go here. Tell me if you are seeing the slides. Kind of. Not yet, but um, not yet. You should select the window. I didn't ask me to. I was expecting. Is. Okay, 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 okay. No, no, no. Wait. Finest. Okay. Finest. Let's get home. Uh, okay. Does it work now? Yeah. Yeah, it's going to work. Now, yeah, it definitely works. Okay, top. So I'll start. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, yeah, Milk is Quantum is the title of our game. We are Team 3. And here in the middle, you can find our names. And uh, yeah, basically, this game is a puzzle game where you play as this uh, cute little cat <laughs> named Ervi who is striving to reach its beloved milk, the, the icon here on the right. And what should be fun is that uh, um, uh, Ervi is uh, um, uh, given the ability to craft its own uh, world's rules. And it does so by pushing around some grammar blocks that get together and eventually compose some sentences that then uh, come into reality as the laws of the level we are playing in. So, uh, yes, for those of you who are thinking, wait, uh, this sounds familiar, uh, we did indeed uh, take inspiration for the game mechanics from the famous game uh, Baba is You. And, uh, uh, yeah, obviously, from the graphics point of view, uh, we were inspired by the as well famous uh, Minecraft. Uh, but uh, uh, Milk is Quantum isn't uh, just uh, Baba is You. It's actually babies, Baba is You spiked with quantum mechanics. And we think that this should allow the players to mess around with some uh, um, basic, basic concept of quantum mechanics, like quantum superposition and uh, uh, quantum measurement, and maybe in a future also quantum entanglement. So to grasp, so, to grasp some of the exoticness of the quantum world. And in uh, creating this game, we were inspired by the first theme, uh, the one regarding the quantum circuits. 
And indeed, our uh, <clears throat> our goal was to try to um, make the users uh, feel some of the properties uh, uh, of the basic properties of the qubit, the unit of information of uh, quantum computation and the, the unit that uh, is uh, at the core of quantum circuits. So uh, indeed, uh, in milk is quantum, the milk actually represents a qubit and uh, acts accordingly. So here on the picture on the right, for example, you can see one of the uh, magical differences between the classical bit of information that can be in only one of uh, two states, zero and one, and uh, what a uh, um, quantum bit, the qubit, uh, uh, can do. That is, uh, since it can be represented as a sphere, it is not bound to um, live only on the poles, so the states zero and one, but can move freely on this sphere. And for example, uh, we can find it in the sum zero plus one that has physics, uh, physicists call uh, um, a superposition state. <clears throat> so, uh, in uh, our game, for example, uh, uh, 0 and 1 are mapped to north and south, and uh, uh, since the milk is quantum, uh, milk can be north and south at once. So, here in this crude scheme, you can see um, uh, an example of one of the puzzles that uh, RV might need to solve. And yes, the, here the milk is actually a flag. That's because uh, it was meant to be th this way uh, during the development of the game and then turned into milk. So anyway, um, the quantum flag is uh, in a superposition, for example, of north and south. And, uh, um, but both states, both, both uh, places are, uh, as I hope you can see from the picture, inaccessible by us because they are surrounded by these white walls. So classically, uh, if we are given the ability um, to uh, select the spawn place of the flag uh, between north and south, uh, we will never uh, accomplish the, the goal of the game, that is uh, to reach the flag. But uh, uh, when quantum comes into play, we can uh, uh, actually exploit the superposition to, to win. And uh, um, another concept that we wanted to portray is that uh, in order to make the flag real, here uh, we can imagine that blue means quantum and uh, this, the, that the flag is still not real in the world. And in order to make it real, we need to make a measurement. So uh, this is another quant concept that we wanted to introduce and that the user needs to exploit in order to solve the puzzle. And the point is that quantum measurements have effect on quantum objects and the way in which you perform the measurement uh, actually changes the result uh, that we get. So for example, in this uh, simple scheme, if uh, uh, RV measures uh, its qubit, its flag, uh, by asking it uh, what's up vertically, uh, he would still not be able to, to win because the flag would spawn with a 50-50 chance uh, in one of the two um, prohibited places. Uh, but instead, what the player should discover is that by replacing vertically with horizontally, something magical should happen and he uh, will eventually be able um, to achieve uh, its goal. <clears throat> okay. Um, so... Uh, the, um, the game was actually implemented uh, uh, in Unreal Engine, but we managed to use uh, uh, Qiskit inside of it to um, manage the, the, phys the physics part of the, of the game. Obviously, uh, at the level we are now, we are only using uh, uh, very basic circuits, but we think that this provides us with the ability of easily implementing more complicated uh, uh, levels and even more complicated quantum stuff like interaction and uh, entanglement. So I guess that's it. The, the commands are here. They're very, uh, very simple. Remember to measure with F. That's a recommendation I give you all. And so, yeah, go drink that kilk. And I thank you all for the attention and hope you will enjoy uh, our game. Um, okay. Paolo, okay. uh, thanks a lot. Uh, do you have a... Um... Yes, I think so. I...
can I uh, okay stop this yeah, sharing and show share you a uh, uh, YouTube tab? <laughs> Yes, uh, yeah. so wait a minute. Mm, 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 mm. Share screen, share screen, window, no, scale. No. Okay. Okay, are you seeing it? Yeah, we, we can okay. see it. Okay, so this is the game. Okay, uh, we can't hear any sound. Is that right, uh, Paolo? Or... No, I am hearing it. Am I supposed uh, we, to give permission for the sound? Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know about this. Where okay. should I? Uh, there should be apparently an option to share, uh, share the sound. Um, let me see. Mm. Uh, I'm afraid I don't know actually how to do that. Uh, you don't have any clue either. No. Uh, maybe here, uh, wait, uh, audio, cons give permission, maybe now? No, Can you hear it yet. now? No, no, no. no, no. Okay, but I mean, it doesn't, um, it doesn't matter. I mean, it matters, but uh, you can have... Uh, yeah, it's more enjoyable the with the audio, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah I, I can swear audio works, so I don't know why <laughs> I, I can just share it with you. So I'm and sorry okay, about but, that. Uh, the, the, the games are available, so... Uh, yeah, yeah, you can definitely yeah. try it yourself yeah. and, and hear the music. Okay. Yeah. So, okay, so Paolo, many thanks. And, uh, Thank you. <laughs> and if there are any are... questions physics related, I can answer, but I'm afraid I, I am not a coding expert. So for the coding okay. point of view. <laughs> <laughs> let, let, let's first uh, hear what uh, Natasha and James uh, uh, can, uh, would like to ask you, so. Yeah, sure. Okay, so I won't ask you how you integrated it with Unity then. Yeah, I, uh, I can ask uh, if well, yeah, um, so our coders can join. I mean, they are willing to, uh, no, if they can. No, I think uh, it's not possible we'll on the floor. Okay. Sorry. Uh, but yeah, Baba is you is, uh, is a game that I've, I've played uh, a, um, a fair bit of, and I've always been interested with the idea that maybe a quantum version could be made and it could be used to teach about quantum mechanics but I've never I've never really had a good inspiration of how to do it myself so I'm just very glad to see someone taking on that uh, job of making a, a quantum inspired or well, Baba is you inspired quantum game so I'm, I'm looking forward to playing it uh, I think that's mostly what I, I have to say so I'll let Natasha yeah, I, I actually know him per personally, the developer of Baba Is You, and uh, as he is in Finland. And um, yeah, the, the, the I, I love the twist that you have been doing there when it comes to also, and and, and to be honest, uh, turning it into the 3D world as well, uh, because I see that also potentially for the future development more than uh, like more more opportunities to actually work with the environment itself. Um, style as minecraft totally fine nothing nothing wrong with that so just saying this sort of like um opportunities for expanding the whole let's say physics side of things and and uh, teaching especially the the parts there uh through through like utilizing this two method it's it's really fascinating uh, approach so yeah thank you excellent job thank you Okay, so uh, if there are uh, no other questions, uh, comments, uh, Paolo, thanks a lot. Thank you uh, again. Uh, 
Uh, I would like to tell you that uh, just for today, I, I put on my nerd shirt. I don't know whether yeah. you can see it. Yeah, yeah, I can. I can. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Which, of course, uh, uh, nighttime with no lights uh, will be dead. <laughs> no, no. At all. Okay. <laughs> okay, so many thanks, Paolo. So actually, these uh, uh, were all uh, the teams, uh, but uh, um, we can uh, uh, we have uh, one more game, uh, video game, because Vince, uh, uh, who uh, I think that nobody has slept uh, that much during these uh, three, these uh, two days, right? So, but uh, possibly Vince uh, slept even less. So he has a second game, and he has uh, just a couple of minutes to uh, to. Uh, show uh, the game to uh, to us and uh, Vince, are you there? Uh, can you enter the show? And the title of uh, the, the, your second game is Disentangle the Loop if you are there. Yes. Uh, okay. I'm uh, back. Vince, uh, please uh, oh. be very, very, very uh, synthetic. Okay. Yeah, sure. Very quick. So what I'm going to do is I have a pre-recorded uh, video put on the YouTube. Uh, can you see my screen now? Oh, I think so, right? Yeah, we, we see. OK, great. Okay. So uh, basically, this is just a um, um, more like a playable version or toddler version of the game we would intended to show. So what I'm seeing now is, for example, uh, again, there's uh, like a circuit composer, and there are like states. Uh, but instead of putting into a neural network, we're putting just in like this, uh, like eight states and three qubits. And what we're going to do is, uh, as an intro step, introduction step, uh, we want to use uh, the user to use this uh, three composer to clap the state to, for example, 101. So this is a more intuitive way I was uh, talking about a very at the very beginning, so the user can just intuitively put like just uh, so just play this as uh, like a space invader game uh, back in 19, uh, 1978 so this is 111 so just kill the uh, the aliens or whatever it is and after three binary operations uh, we will be the game will be a little bit more difficult so what's coming up is uh, this uh, superposition. So we were expecting two enemies at the same time, and the user need to uh, need to beat this guy uh, with uh, with the help of uh, Hadamard gate. So basically, you have one and zero, and you can beat it in. Uh, that cannot be done classically, and this is a, a next example of using superposition. And so this is also a simpler uh, uh, version that you can imagine because there's only one Harama gate involved. And this is, uh, OK. Uh, yeah, that is also uh, just superposition. OK, so what just happened now is uh, the next level of the game, which is called the bell state, which user need to implement uh, something else uh, more than uh, uh, superposition so this for example you cannot do this by superposition because um so by the way i specifically uh, fine-tune the measurement shot and the criteria such that only the shot more than so for example in in this game you can exploit the game by putting all hard on gate and you can end up everywhere right but in that case i specifically tune the measurement time to be 16 and only count those states more than three so if you use Oharama gate, then you always end up with two, 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 which will not qualify as a, a state will be counted. And in that case, only by, by only using the proper way, uh, proper arrangement of circuits, you can uh, simultaneously appear on these two position. And this is a bell state. And the bell state, again, I, as I mentioned, it just requires two more state, uh, one more state, oh, sorry, one more gate, which is a control knot. And, uh, like for example, this another control knot gate uh, will will collapse the whole state to this, uh, uh, the whole quantum state to this just to these two states. And next up is the, the GHZ state, which basically you cannot employ that 
you cannot use it, you cannot do it with just bail state. It's, it's a little bit more complicated. They require uh, uh, something else. And, and uh, actually, I, I, I did some math, and I eventually I noticed that uh, all of the two states, like, like pair of states, uh, I mean, all of the possible combination can be realized by the tool given to the, or like the training given to this player. So eventually go into this challenger mode. So you just kill as many uh, uh, as many enemy as possible. So this is the uh, the count enemy counts, and it will serve as high score board, uh, just to keep uh, player engaged to keep playing on this game. So that's my uh, like like the baby version of our uh, current games, and and that's it. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you, Vince. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know whether there are some quick. Uh comments or uh, questions from uh, Natasha or James? Well, good thing I'll say. Looks great. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, this is actually inspired by the coupon, the game uh, that you developed uh, back uh, several years ago. And I, I saw that the coupon just have single ball and you can, you, the user can actually uh, wing it by using binary operations. So I was thinking maybe something like two balls in the meantime, in the meanwhile, dropping in the meanwhile can help user trying to use more quantum in this game. Okay, so many thanks, uh, Vince. So I think that we are really heading to uh, the end of this uh, presentation, of this uh, um, uh, closure uh, event of the Quantum Game Jam. Actually, it's not really a closure, a, a final event, because uh, this afternoon uh, from three to 5 p.m. Uh, Sabaku no, Ma no Maiku is an uh, is, uh, artistic name. Uh, the YouTube, uh, YouTuber will uh, comment uh, uh, all of the video games, uh, will play and comment all the video games uh, on uh, the Internet Festival uh, channel. So whoever uh, is interested to this additional event can uh, join uh, just going to the uh, to the uh, website uh, and the page of Internet Festival and uh, looking for uh, the event. Uh, I'd like to, uh, it's, ta uh, it's time, uh, right, Sabrina, for our uh, uh, thanking words. And uh, I, I start first uh, thanking uh, Michele Lanzo, who uh, is uh, uh, our almighty power <laughs> in, uh, in the Discord. <laughs> In the Discord platform, uh, actually, he's the person who, since the very beginning uh, uh, from Internet Festival, uh, has taken care about the organization of the Quantum Game Jam. And so uh, many thanks uh, to Michele from uh, everyone uh, of us. It has been uh, just great. Uh, and uh, also, of course, to the organization of Internet Festival. Uh, and uh, in particular, uh, I would like to mention Adriana De Cesare, uh, that uh, um, Sabrina and I met uh, just uh, a few days before the first lockdown in Italy in a coffee shop in Pisa while Sabrina was here and we talked to her about this idea and eventually it took place uh, irrespective of, uh, of COVID, so we are happy about that. Uh, the Quantum Game Jam, just uh, a couple of numbers and then I will uh, uh, ask Sabrina to... Um, to uh, keep going and uh, close, uh, um, has, be, has had uh, more than 80, uh, 80 uh, registered uh, persons, uh, 60 registered uh, to the jam on uh, ICO. And so uh, considering that this was uh, um, the first quantum game jam and it was online, uh, quantum game jam in Italy, I mean, and it was uh, uh, online, I think that uh, uh, it has been a, a nice experiment, uh, uh, very, uh, very involving, a uh, lot of community building, uh, and uh, I'm sure that uh, as uh, um, uh, Janji, uh, our uh, responsible person of, uh, from the University of Pisa uh, for Internet Festival said in, uh, the fo in uh, his first words at the beginning uh, uh, of, the, uh, of the event on Friday, uh, I'm sure that we will uh, organize uh, uh, other uh, quantum game jams uh, uh, later on uh, in uh, Internet Festival. So, Sabrina, um, would you like to add uh, something? 
Just thanks to Natasha and James and to all the fantastic drummers and everyone who contributed to the organization of this uh, fantastic event. It's been great. Bye, everyone. Goodbye. Thanks from my side, too. It has been great. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye. It was a pleasure, as always. <laughs>